35 miles south of Indianapolis in rural Bloomington, Indiana, Circuit Court Judge Viola Talaferro begins a long day of CHINS hearings, the acronym for Children in Need of Services. The parents are not always at fault. Sometimes they're simply overwhelmed. Linda Wells is a low-income divorced mother of three. She's in front of Judge Talaferro today because she believes her nine-year-old daughter Chelsea is severely disturbed and out of control. The child is diagnosed oppositional defiant disorder, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, and mildly mentally retarded. Chelsea's child welfare case manager Greg Keyes and state's attorney Steve Galvin tell the court that mom can no Linda longer cope. Agrees and in fact uh, has asked for the intervention of the Office of Family and Children in this matter. Is that correct? That's correct. She's trying her best. Is that correct? Yes, she is. In the past, Linda has asked the court for help in dealing with Chelsea's mental health needs. But this is the first time she's asked the state to take her daughter away. Judge Talaferro recognizes how painful the decision is. You really put forth a, well, I don't have the word to describe the effort that you've put forth to keep your daughter at home. Well, there's not a doubt in my mind that the only reason you're doing this is because you feel you simply cannot handle it at home. These cases present enormous problems for parents because the, the cost of caring for them is just overwhelming and many, many, uh, most people cannot afford to pay for the care of these children and there are not enough facilities for them. So you have parents uh, such as Chelsea's mother who will try every way that can be tried to keep the child at home. But if the child is unmanageable, uh, it cannot be done. I've tried to maintain her for nine and a half years and I can't do it no more. And I'm just hoping that they can keep her here in Bloomington at the Stone Belt where I can see her more often. Linda is urging the court to place her daughter closer to home. But the state's attorney has a different facility in mind called Daymar. It's 35 it's miles away. Into Daymar, if possible. That's a little bit further away, Linda. Were you aware of that? Uh, yeah, and we were just wondering if, uh, you know, the state or someone's going to pay for the Daymar. Daymar is an established private facility in Indiana, housing over 160 children with developmental disabilities. And then on a bad day that, um, you know, like if her mind's made up to where she don't want to do nothing, you have to struggle with her, argue, fight her. She's, you know, like if I have to restrain her, she's throwing me around in my living room, you know, picking up boards, hitting me in the head. I've dealt with this for, you know, struggling with it for nine and a half years, you know, trying to keep her from being locked up and taken away from me. Less than a month after her last hearing, Linda returns to court and learns where her daughter will be living. I further that Chelsea should be transferred to Daymar when an opening becomes available. And at Daymar, Chelsea will obtain the special care and treatment provided by Daymar. Uh, Daymar, of course, is a long-term residential placement and will provide Chelsea with the structure that she needs. Do you agree with that, Ms. Wells? Do you know very much about Daymar yet? Uh-uh. Do you want to go up there before your daughter is transferred there? Yeah, I'd there? like to, yeah. Oh, she'll love that, because <laughs> she's an outdoor person. Linda makes one visit to Daymar before her daughter will move in. She arrives with Chelsea's home-based counselor, Megan Dorland, who helps her through the two-hour tour. So for her, it'd be trying to integrate her into a public classroom, a public school, but right. also in a self-contained, right? Because that's where she went. Right. We, yeah. ha we have a number of different options. Did you have any other questions about, this is a med room in here? It's usually one staff and two children in here cooking. I think every child yeah. does enjoy that, Chelsea the attention. Loves helping me. That's a nice playground. Living room, family room area, what one of the bedrooms looks like. And we have it pretty divided off, so they have their own privacy. We're going to head to the next building. One staff to four clients over here. That is common. That is very common. Okay. <laughs> but she does like the water, right? Oh, yes, she loves it. <laughs> Each child will have their individual program plan. I'm finding out more about the home and what they provide. And, and I think it, you know, she does have to come here. I think it'd 
this would be a good place for her. That's the goal for all of our kids, to help prepare them to live in, in community settings, whether that be back at home. But no matter how pleased she is with the facility, it's still hard for Linda to come to grips with her decision. It is because I sit at home every night thinking, you know, did I do the right thing? I mean, I know I've got to be doing the right thing because, I mean, I can't give her the special needs that she needs to maintain out here in the world mm -hmm. and stuff. And I mean, but I just still beat myself up thinking, am I just giving her up or what? But, mm -hmm. but I want to do the right thing. It will be several months before Damar has a room available for Chelsea. For now, the nine-year-old remains hospitalized, just minutes away from her home. Come summer, Chelsea will leave the only life she knows in Bloomington. This is a day 38-year-old mom, Linda Wells, and her husband, Willie, are finding hard to comprehend. It's time to move their young 10-year-old daughter, Chelsea, to Damar, a long-term residential placement facility in Indianapolis. Chelsea is here today because six months ago, Linda asked the state to take her child. She could no longer cope with Chelsea's challenging behavior. Linda and the Damar staff have tried to prepare Chelsea for today's move, but at just 10 years old, Chelsea is completely overwhelmed. Carla Bill is admissions director at Damar. She knows what an emotional time this is for Chelsea and her family and does her best to make Chelsea feel at home. Chelsea will share her new dorm with eight other girls and attend school on the Damar campus. She lights up when she finally gets to see what the kids at Damar love most, the pool. After her tour of the Damar campus, Chelsea heads back to her dorm, where, with her mom by her side, she quietly eats her first lunch at her new home. After lunch, Linda tries to stay positive as all of Chelsea's belongings are moved into her new room. These are dirty. It's a toy chest. Another pair of shoes. We're straightening them in there too, okay? Hey, Mom, my hand. Hand Can you help me with my clothes? Linda knows her time with Chelsea is beginning to run out. I knew this day was going to be coming, but now reality just set in. You're going to have some fun up here, right? I love 
ਦੇ 